If you've been mixing your songs in GarageBand for a while, you would have worked out that if we come into our mixer here, that we can pan our tracks left and right and anywhere in between. But what if we want to make an effect where it starts on the left and pans across to the right automatically, creating a stereo panning effect? Well, in this GarageBand iOS quick tip, I'm gonna show you how you can do that here in GarageBand on your iPhone or your iPad. Let's go. Okay, so to demonstrate this, I've got my song here. This is my song called New Day. So there's all of my tracks. Now, what I've got, I've got this little effect here that comes in after the first uh, verse or chorus, wherever it is. Um, and it's a little sort of chime effect that we have here using some percussion. So if we come into the percussion, just to show you what it is, it is this one here. So there you go, just a little subtle chime effect that we have in here. So how that sounds in the context of our mix. Now I'll turn the volume up here, it wasn't about two thirds, but if we turn the volume up and hit play, it sounds like this. Yesterday, because it's gone, and it's a new day. So it's just a nice little thing that just takes you in from the end of the end of the chorus actually into the next verse or that little interlude between the verses. So um, what we want to do here though is this is all just sitting. If we go to our mixer here, this is sort of just sitting over here on the left. But what I want it to do is when it starts playing, I want it to be here and then I want it to slide across. So what we can use to do this is our old friend automation. But first what we need to do is actually duplicate this track. So we'll go back to our main view here. Let's duplicate the track by tapping, hitting duplicate. And then we need to do the same with the audio. So we'll tap here, we will copy it, we'll tap on the next track, we'll tap again, lots of tapping and hit paste. So now if we play this back, all that we're gonna hear is that the volume is gonna be twice as loud like this. Cause it's gone. It's a new day. So the sound is just sitting in that same place over on the left of our stereo spectrum. However, we can now use our volume automation. And if you haven't checked out volume automation, it is an amazing tool. You need to check it out. Plenty more videos, which I'll link up and down. So volume automation can help us actually do this. So the first thing we need to do, let's zoom in on this sucker so that we can see what we're doing. We'll go into our first track by tapping and we'll tap on automation. Now, the, what I'm gonna do with the automation is that what I basically want, for, for a pan, pan is just a volume, yeah? So panning is just how much volume is going to the left channel versus the right channel of your output. So we can use volume automation here, we'll just turn it on up in the top left there, to tell GarageBand how much volume we want on each side. So this is gonna be our left one. So what we wanna do is when the sound kicks in here, we want it to be at full volume, and then we want it to go down to low volume. So you'll notice that I've just tapped two points there. And now if we turn off our ability to add points, we can just tap and drag this down to zero volume or minus infinity dB volume. All we now need to do now is tap on this one and do the exact opposite. So to do this, what I'm gonna do is tap a point here or turn on my points first, tap a point, tap another point around about the same spot and then turn off that so we don't make any mistakes. And let's just drop that volume all the way down. And you can very quickly see what we're doing here. We're basically starting one high and going low, one low and going high. And when we play these back, let's just solo these here. You'll see that the volume knobs themselves will actually change. So you can see as it goes through like that, the volume automates and we get this stereo panning effect. So what we're gonna do is hit done on that one, on our automation, because there's one more thing we have to do here. We need to separate these out to the left and the right. So let's tap on our mixer icon. Let's pan this one hard left and let's pan this one hard right. And you'll notice there that our track volume now can't be adjusted. So I'm tapping and trying to slide these sliders and they won't go because as soon as you add automation, you can't change the volume using your volume sliders. And that's important to know. And it's the reason why automation is the last thing I do on a mix because once you start automation, you're basically stuck in that automation zone. And if you just wanna tweak the volume up and down a little bit, then you can't do that very easily. There are ways around that, but we'll get into that in another video on another day. All right, let's now unsolo these. Actually, we'll do it soloed first. So let's just listen to these soloed and you'll be able to hear it's starting on the left and going to the right.
There you go. So it's very subtle there, and it's not a huge change, but it just means that when we put it back in our mix, let's just uh, take these solos off by tapping over here. Let's listen to this back in the mix now. A day, cause it's gone. It's a new day. Yeah, once again, pretty subtle. Just a nice way of having that little bit of more interest. So if someone's probably not going to even hear it unless they're listening in headphones, and you may not hear it if you're listening on your, your iPad or your iPhone speaker right now. But trust me that it is going, and you can see there that it is going from the left to the right because those volumes are going up and down, and we know from looking in here that our panning is on the left and on the right. So that is it, a very quick way, and you're already probably ahead of me in starting to think of other ways you can use this to do to panning effects. You can also also use, we won't go into it today, but you can also use this for other effects. So if I wanted a particular effect on a track, but only at a certain time, I can use the same method, duplicate the track and then automate that. So if I wanted like a cool delay on the last word of a phrase, I could do the same thing with my vocal, just duplicate it out and then sort of mute or drop down the volume of the first one, bring in that second one and then put the effect just on the second one. So again, having automation across all these effects and panning and everything would be great. But until we have that in GarageBand, and I do hope we get it one day, this is the way that we can actually get this done. I hope you found this interesting. I hope you can use this in an upcoming project. If you've got questions, comments, or suggestions, leave them down below and I'll see you on the next video. Hey, thanks for sticking around to the end. If you'd like to learn more about automation, there are two other automation videos right down below. You can also subscribe to the channel by clicking on the Studio Live Today icon or head to studiolivetoday.com for more audio goodness.